Okay. Welcome to College to Cloud Native, the student's introduction to KubeCon Cloud Native Con. Uh, I'm Bill Mulligan and I work at the CNCF and I'm super happy to have you here today. Um, welcome to everyone saying hi in the chat. Please feel free to introduce yourself or ask any questions that you have along the way there. That's what this session is for, is to help answer your questions and get you introduced to the conference. And with me today, I have... Hey, everyone. My name is Savita. I work at the Red Hat, and I have been involved with the Kubernetes upstream community for about two years now. So I'm here to share all the experiences and answer any questions and uh, uh, just be a friendly face, face to everyone. So yeah, cool. Done. Thanks for joining me today. And so you're in LA with me right now. Is that right? That's right, Billy. We are just in the same portal, yeah. but same we went to the different. Um, hopefully, we'll meet up later today. But also, for all the people that are joining virtually, uh, I know you're going to have a great event too, and we're super excited to have you. Um, so, I guess the first question uh, that I think a lot of people have is, even though they're here, like, what is KubeCon called NativeCon, or like, what would you describe it as? So um, when I think about KubeCon, so it's just not about Kubernetes. It's also about the entire, so once a little uh, step back. So when I first went to my KubeCon and I thought it's all about KubeCon, but uh, like Kubernetes, but that's not true. So they're all like cool uh, located events for other cloud native projects and stuff for a couple of days. And then the main event focuses on Kubernetes and things around Kubernetes, uh, like uh, platform infrastructure, how to provision this uh, in uh, various uh, environments, air gap, government, how does uh, NASA uses Kubernetes to do uh, some of the processing stuff. And it's for developers, it's for end users, it's for open source contributors, it's for anyone who want to learn and share uh, uh, their uh, whatever that uh, they have learned throughout their way. Uh, it's it's about sharing experiences. So that's how I see it. Uh, that's how I see KubeCon, and that's the main reason that I'm here. I want to meet my friends, and I want to meet the community, and I want to share uh, anything and everything I know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and kind of going back over the last couple of KubeCons, do you have like a favorite experience that you want to share kind of that like other students might look forward to or get inspired by? Oh, yes, definitely. So this was my first KubeCon in 2018, uh, Seattle. Um, and that's the first time that uh, a, a little bit, a little while ago, I started using Kubernetes for my work project. And then I stumbled upon lots of issues. And that's how I got into the Kubernetes Slack channel. And I saw these amazing people helping me out. Um, so at my first KubeCon, right? And there was this uh, concept of a speed mentoring session. And I was like super interested. So I registered for it. I went there and then I got to know, I got to meet so many people. They were mentors and I was a mentee. So uh, I asked them like, how can I start? Where can I start? I feel overwhelmed. I don't know what to do, but I want to give back. I just don't know where to do, uh, where to go and what to do. Um, and uh, I got a boatload of information and I came back. I diligently went to sync release meetings for six months. I just lurked around. I never spoke up because I was so shy and I was still uh, grasping what was going on. Um, and uh, then it started. My contributor journey started, and uh, and since then, every KubeCon virtual or in person, I try and give back the uh, things that I got from the community. I try and mentor. I sign up to be a mentor, so that I can uh, do my part. Uh, so that is my favorite favorite experience. In addition to meeting all the amazing people, uh, which still makes me go like oh like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is my like the best memory that I have. Wow. That, yeah, that sounds awesome. A, a great way to jump in. I remember my first KubeCon in Copenhagen. It was the same thing. I showed up and I was like, wow, this is an awesome event. There's so many cool people doing awesome things here. Like, this is the place to be. So we're happy to have everybody joining us here uh, in person and virtually too. And so I guess, like, I know a lot of students are joining us um, virtually. Um, so I thought maybe it'd be good to kind of jump into like the platform and walk them through uh, like the different features and functionalities and where they need to look for things. So I'm just going to share my screen. That'll really be awesome. 
quick and let's see what we can find. Um, so this is the like welcome screen that we have here. Um, as you jump in, if you added things to your schedule, uh, to your schedule in, uh, in Sketch, then it'll actually show up here. So you can see the things I'm attending today, uh, obviously <laughs> the call to cloud native session, cause we're here right now, got some marketing office hours later as part of my job and the cloud native TV daily recap, which is if you're watching this right now, you're also watching cloud native TV. So you're already in the right place for, um, all these things. We have a little like intro video here. Um, another important thing for like CNCF is our code of conduct. Uh, we want to make sure this is a welcoming and safe environment for everybody. So like, please be sure to follow code of conduct. And if you have any problems or don't feel comfortable at the event, like the events team is there to help you. Um, and please feel free to reach out to them so that you feel like this is a safe space uh, for you too. Um, Beyond that, I know a lot of things happening today um, are like the co-located events. Uh, so did you go to any co-located events yesterday or today that, that you liked? Um, so there was an unofficial one, the contributor submit. That's why that, that was that uh, I it got canceled kind of because there weren't like enough sign up. So we just met and we did a docs sprint. So we wanted to improve the contributor documentation. Um, that was the thing that I went to. And there was this event after that where I got to meet other fellow contributors. Um, today, I am planning to go to OpenShift Commons. Um, there, there is a co-located day even for that. So that's what I'm um, planning to go to. Uh, just to meet my uh, uh, peers. Um, I recently switched uh, to a new uh, company, Red Hat. So I'm like, oh, this is the best place where I could go see people and say hi. So uh, that's that's probably the main reason um, to meet and uh, connect with people. Cool. Yeah, so that's one of the sponsor hosted co-located events. Uh, so jumping over there. Um, cool. And um, then, yeah. Th there are like so many interesting ones that I'm like, uh, I want to go here. I want to go there. I do want to do this. And then the only in uh, thing that keeping me like saying is, that, <laughs> oh, so, okay, this content is so interesting and I will be able to watch it later uh, if I need to. And uh, it will be later available on YouTube. So I'm like, okay. Uh, that is the only uh, comforting thing because that yeah. everything is so interesting. Yeah, there's so many sessions I want to attend to. Uh, like if I jump over to my agenda, like I know there's already like some things that are like overlapping. Like if I jump into like Wednesday, like right here, like two talks at the same time. Uh, luckily uh, in the platform, uh, if, even if you're in different places around the world, once the session is passed, you can go back at any point and rewatch the session. So, you know, if I can't watch both of these at the same time, uh, obviously tomorrow, so I can watch one of them and then I can come back like in the evening and check it out later. So the events will, or the videos will always be like live on the platform um, when you're recording. So, or like after the session is done. So really cool feature of the virtual platform. Um, another thing is like the solutions showcase. Um, so I know that we have a bunch of really great sponsors that are making this event happen. Uh, obviously Red Hat being one of them. <laughs> Um, but this is a great way to like dive in and see which companies are you know, kind of uh, like growing, coming in the cloud native space, or potentially if you're looking for like a job or an internship, some of them might be hiring too. So you should check out the solutions showcase um, and see what you can find here. I know if like we we can just like dive in say to the Sysdig booth. Uh, we can learn a little bit about the company, find out when they have live office hours. But it looks like they have you to have some jobs and offers over here. So lots of great stuff in all the booths um, if you're trying to learn about different companies in the ecosystem too. Let's see what else. Uh, there are the Project Pavilion. Um, so this is if you want to learn more about like the CNCF. Uh, I know we have, I think it's 113 projects now under CNCF. Wow. <laughs> Kubernetes being just one of them, which is already a massive project. Um, so if you're new to the ecosystem and trying to find your way around, uh, like what are all the different projects and things like that, you should check out uh, some of the uh, project booths and 
dive into them. Uh, Right. So we have Kubernetes here, we have some incubating projects and also lots and lots of sandbox projects too. So uh, beyond that, a really important thing is the, the Slack. So it's the CNCF Slack. Um, and I'll just type a link to it, uh, slack.cncf.io and put it in the chat. And these are a couple channels that you want to um, join as you're going through. So the announcements helps if you need anything, uh, uh, probably nothing for the sponsors, the keynotes, if you want to chat, uh, different channels for all the different, um, uh, both tracks and co-located events. Then there also is a KubeCon students track. So if you're a student, I highly encourage you to jump in there, uh, and join us, uh, lots of different ways for like interactive things to and then probably my favorite is the hallway mix and mingle. Um, have you gone on this one before? Maybe you want to give a little taste of it. I was actually going to mention that, uh, uh, highlighted like, oh, there is also another track, uh, uh, which is like amazing. You should like, if you want to just hang around, meet amazing people, that is a Slack channel. And uh, actually that, uh, when that started, uh, when the pandemic started, when we moved all the KubeCon to virtual, and then we were all missing all our friends and meeting new community members. And that hallway track was really, really awesome. Um, and there are like, uh, I hopped on to some Zoom meetings last time. This time I haven't had the chance to actually hop into any of the meetings. Uh, that's been probably, uh, I, I hope there are like virtual meetings that's going on throughout the day. Uh, so you can open, say hi, chat about few stuff, and you can hop off, no pressure. It's not like you have to stay all the way, like because you join the call, it's not like that. Uh, it's super friendly. It's like just bumping into someone, your friends, and then like, hey, I'm here. What's new and what's happening? And just making sure that everyone's okay. Like your friends are doing okay and you're doing good. So it's, uh, it's, it's a nice way to, uh, de-stress relax meet new people so yes that is my favorite but i haven't hopped onto the uh any of the calls because i'm trying to meet people in person uh i might just uh, hop into one of the meetings later just to say hi to people who are virtual yeah definitely i think i'll have to jump into the zoom at some point too um, so I see that we have a couple questions in the chat about like how to get started. So any suggestions on useful resources to begin with the learning process, um, any suggestions on how to become a contributor? Um, yeah. Uh, so a couple things I know, uh, Dims has a really great, like Kubernetes resources, um, uh, like repo and it has lots of different resources in there on like how to get started learning and joining the cloud native community, learning about Kubernetes and other things like that. Um, there's also two, if you want to start contributing, there's two websites that I'd probably want to point you to. One is contribute.cncf.io and the Kubernetes one is k8s.dev. And so those are good places to, um, get started too. Uh, there's also another question. Uh, are these Slack channels active beyond the KubeCon period? Yeah, they're probably active for like a week or two afterwards, and then they're going to be archived until the next KubeCon too. Um, but don't worry, there's lots of other Slack channels in CNCF. So even if the KubeCon ones come to an end, uh, there's other ones that you can join and chat in too. So. And there is also another thing that I want to highlight. Um, so this time the in-person or the uh, co-located contributor submit didn't happen. That means that there is going to be a contributor celebration that will be happening soon. So if folks want to be a part of it, just keep an eye out. Um, I think the invite or the communication about it would go to KDEV uh, mailing list mainly. And it will be like Twitter. And I think I bet the... Um, if you watch a couple of uh, CNCF related um, official handles, I think the CNCF students in CNCF uh, should uh, retweet whenever the celebration is up and running. That, that would also be a great place. And there might be like uh, sessions on new contributor workshop. I know I don't know if that's going to happen this time, but it's also a great place uh, to uh, get started, meet people and get started with uh, contributions. Yeah, absolutely. So if you aren't following uh, Kubernetes on Twitter yet, uh, go and follow them because that'll be 
announced there. Um, there's also questions, what's the Zoom session for mix and mingle? And related to that, how can we network with new people in virtual mode? Uh, you can join the hallway track uh, Zoom session. I just dropped the link to that uh, in the chat. And you'll also find the info for all that and ways to meet new people in the hallway mix and mingle channel. So I would uh, check out that. Uh, we also have another question. Uh, so where did you start your journey since there's so much out there? Like, how did you first start in Kubernetes? I know we covered it a little bit at the beginning, but maybe do you want to re rehash it? Yeah, so my journey started with attending a speed mentoring session. Um, and it's just not like when I came back home, it was still overwhelming for me. I went to the meetings. Um, I didn't know what to do and where to start with. And then I shifted my focus a little bit towards SIG docs uh, because documentation was something uh, that was very easy to understand and easy to start with. Uh, and that's where I started. Uh, I fixed the 404 URL. That's how everything started. That gave <laughs> That's that sounds so simple and easy, and they gave me a lot of motivation. Once you see the PR get merged, it's like uh, it gives you just just the right amount of con confidence boost, and uh, you can start. I started doing like little bigger ones, and then I um, I applied to be a part of the Kubernetes release team. Um, I got uh, rejected a couple times first, <laughs> and then I uh, got selected after that. Um, and since I've been a part of the release team since 1.18. Um, eventually, I got to lead a 1.22 release. Um, and that was like really awesome. I learned a lot of like people skills. Um, I developed uh, my uh, how to be more empathetic. And I learned how to be a good leader. Uh, it's like listening to all your uh, peers and uh, your team makes you an awesome person, awesome lead. It's not like you have to do all by yourself. So I learned how to ask for help, and that is like a that was like a big deal. So these are little few little things. In addition to knowing about the technology, in addition to learning about more about Kubernetes, these are like the extra skills that I picked up along the way. So. Um, from there, I also uh, started um, leading uh, one of the SIG security sub project, uh, which is called SIG security documentation. So I uh, make sure that, uh, like I help people come together and uh, make the Kubernetes website uh, uh, documentation related to security up to date and add more content to it. Um, so that's one of the things that's going on. And I also, I'm a new membership coordinator and that is like a feather in my cap because I really love it because I get to say hi to all the new, uh, org members, whoever wants to be a new org member. And when I am, if I'm doing the PR around the time when I say like, hi, welcome to the Kubernetes community. And, uh, uh, that's like a feather in my cap. So, so far this has been my journey and I'm hoping I could do more. Um, I want to. Uh, when uh, Billy and uh, uh, Kunal was talking about the student, uh, CNC of student in Chedo, I was like super happy because when I was a student, I did not have all these means. Um, I didn't know many of these things uh, 10 years ago. And this is like a great platform. And then this is like um, amazing uh, venue where people can ask questions without having to think twice. So I just want to help uh, with students' in initiative in any way possible. So um, that's my future goal. Um, it's all from me. I think I kept talking for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Also, was your first PR also like a 404? Yeah. Because that, that's what it was for me too, funnily enough. Yeah, I was like, there's a broken link. I need, I need to fix this. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a good place to start. Um, and yeah, so check out SIG Docs if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to start contributing to Kubernetes, really great place to start. Both the people on uh, the stream today started in SIG Docs, and you can too. Uh, we have a question a while back from N. Glassman. Um, do you have a home lab set up? Uh, for Kubernetes? Yeah. Um... Um, I just have a couple of pies, uh, Raspberry Pis. I try to uh, tinker around, uh, but mostly for uh, anything that I want to do, I just uh, use a uh, kind that is amazing. Uh, you can do many of the 
things that you want to learn kubernetes is kind um uh and i just use a aws subscription for anything else that i want um i don't have anything like full fledged crazy home lab setup going on yet uh i do have like few raspberry pis and i want to build a nice um catch to keep them safe and uh not get them heated up and it's like a mini side project that's going on but it's not completed i do have guides though so if anyone is looking forward to build their own um like so, like mini setup with raspberry pis i have a couple of a uh, bookmarked a rasp um bookmarked uh, articles that i can share later it's it's in my personal computer i don't have it right now but i will be happy to post it later um it's very detailed Cool. Yeah, I think that would be great for all all the students joining us today. Um, so jumping back into the platform, uh, another thing that we really care about in the Kubernetes community is your wellness, your safety, like how you're feeling. So we have a whole bunch of like interactive experiences and wellness experiences like physical well-being, emotional well-being, social well-being. So if you ever need a break from the conference, feel free to uh, jump in here. And there's lots of great experiences that you can take advantage of. Um, beyond that, uh, another big thing is like diversity and inclusion, uh, a lot of great things going on here. So the empower us, um, from allies, the partners, uh, about inclusive leadership and the diversity inclusion workshop, and also the peer mentoring and career networking. Uh, I think this is probably similar to the speed networking, um, that, uh, you first started that. Yeah, it has become like a pod mentoring right now. So in, um, initially, it was uh, uh, it was actually uh, you just move around the tables, um, and uh, you get like fifteen minutes, and then um, you talk to uh, you talk to others in your table, and then you talk to the mentor as well. Um, now it's more on uh, like uh, there are like career oriented. They are like contribution related and there is like a tech uh like uh like pure core kubernetes tech uh mentoring tables too so that you can actually pick what you want to um and that's how it has been for the past few virtual events after the pandemic had started and i don't know how the in-person is this time so um i bet that's gonna be awesome yeah uh hopefully i i, I want to swing by there too because i think it's always helped new people uh, get into the ecosystem too. Uh, the next thing is in the virtual event platform, there's lots of badges and you can get, uh, and there's also prizes too. Uh, so if you collect a lot of different points here, uh, you can get a virtual or a gift card to the CNCF store. I know a lot of people like getting swag and this is one way that you can get uh, swag by running through all the different things in the platform. So definitely check out um, that one too. If you want to try out like different games uh i know red hat also sponsored this too um a bunch of like source games um so either you can both play them and you can contribute to them too so quite cool uh then there's some virtual giveaways this is like similar to the sponsor booth uh where different like coloring books um i don't know uh e-gaming sets uh like different things to download here uh lots of information from the different companies. So yeah, like lots of really interesting things happening on the virtual event platform. So cool. Is there anything else you wanted to go through on the event platform or that I missed? Uh, no, I think we pretty much covered everything. And I also want to mention one other thing. Um, so the sessions on the live uh, event platform will be active, I think until the next KubeCon probably it's EU or until then. So last time I took a lot of advantage of that. I know the sessions are always available on the YouTube, but having access to the event platform was like a little bit different experience for me. Um, uh, both are one and the same, if you ask me, but then it felt like you have the access for uh, a month uh, before the uh, sessions get uploaded in the YouTube. Um, so I took full advantage of that. So if any one of you are feeling that you have exams, you have, or you are preparing for interviews, you're job hunting, and you don't have time to cover stuff, don't worry. 
these things, all the sessions are going to be there. So um, you can come back and you can uh, learn about them anytime that you want. And you can also get the context of the presenters and you can reach out to them uh, if they have shared their contact uh, uh, publicly in the uh, slides. Um, otherwise, feel free to post a question uh, in Kubernetes Slack or Twitter or somewhere. And definitely someone or the other would um, be there to help out. Yeah, absolutely. So next thing is you said that you're speaking on the student track. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the student track? Because I know this is the first time that we've had this at KubeCon, and I'm super excited for it. I am really, really excited. And thank you for making this happen. Um, uh, so this uh, it's a panel session um, on uh, it's mainly focused on getting students uh, started uh, with co like open source contribution con contributions. So it's basically like OSS one hundred and one introduction to open source for students. Um, here in that in that session, we uh, me and my fellow panelists we discussed about like uh, how to. Uh, where to start, which projects to choose, um, how to start contributing, what can you do, non-code contributions, um, how to overcome imposter syndrome, and uh, like a little bit of career advice too. So it's gonna be super interesting. Um, so if, if anyone wants to learn more about it, I think it's happening on the 14th, um, October 14th. And I don't know, I, um, I don't know, but, uh, like I think uh, the folks are for all over from the world, so I'm not sure if I have the uh, time calculator to just uh, <laughs> when I'm always confused with respect to time. Right now, I'm just trying to think like, what is the time in India? Uh, yeah, so, um, I'm dropping a link to uh, your session in the chat right now. So I just pulled up and I'm sharing the screen. So this is the student track. There's a panel discussion. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. That was the wrong panel discussion. <laughs> I just, uh, that, that, yeah, that's someone. This is the correct link. Uh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, so please use the second link, not the first one. But I would also encourage you go to go to the first one too. Yeah. If you really, another good one. Um, so in the student track, we have, uh, I know a lot of people are interested in like contributing to open source projects. One really great way to do that is through the uh, internship and like mentorship programs that CNCF offers. Uh, we have four throughout the year, the biggest one uh, being in the summer. We combine with uh, Google Summer of Code, but we also, and Google Summer of Doc, we also do ones through LFX and Outreachy, like every single quarter. Um, I would highly recommend going to this panel if you want to learn about how to become a, a mentee with CNCF. And not only is it a great way to increase your experience contributing to open source, but you also get paid for it too. Um, so it's, I think, a pretty sweet um, way to do it. Um, do you also offer it for non-students? Yes, the actual, the internships are also for, uh, open to non-students too. Um, another one is getting involved in the Kate's release shadow program. Uh, this one's about like, if you want to get like more into the Kubernetes ecosystem and you know climb the contributor ladder, it's a great way to learn about that. Um, we already had the introduction to open source for students. Uh, panel discussions, more code, how to rock out with non-code contributions. Uh, I know a big thing that we talk about is it's it's not just about the people that are uh, you know writing the code. There's so much more that makes that is, needs to happen for uh, the community to be successful. Um, so this is a great one to know if you want to learn about those other opportunities. Uh, I actually know somebody that went to that at the last KubeCon, and she was so inspired by that that she organized a Kubernetes community day uh, in the UK and brought a bunch of people together across from across the whole UK uh, to talk about Kubernetes and cloud native topics uh, in their local time zone. So you can go there, get inspired, uh, find out new ways to get involved in the community too. Yeah. Uh, and the last one is deciphering your way to world of Golang. I know Go is like a really big language in the Kubernetes and cloud native ecosystem. This is probably a good way to like kind of get introduced to uh, topics like that. So yeah, looks like we also have a couple more questions in the chat. We'll be, we'll be just interactive via chats or do we have anything over video um, as well? 
most of the stuff is just chat in the platform. Um, if you want video, uh, I'd suggest dropping into the hallway Zoom and you can meet and chat with people there. Um, will all the sessions be on YouTube? Uh, yes, they will all be on YouTube. It'll probably be like, it's somewhere like two to four weeks after the conference, but since you're already um, in the platform, you'll have access to them immediately as soon as they're uh, done being uh, shown. Uh, what is CNCF? Yeah, so uh, CNCF is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We're the open so or we're the neutral home for all the projects. Um, we're a nonprofit under the Linux Foundation umbrella, and uh, we help create and sustain the ecosystem around all of our projects. So we collect money from members and funnel it into resources for the projects. So paying for different things like the Kubernetes Contributor Summit here uh, at KubeCon, you know, uh, setting up and organizing KubeCon, different things like uh, cloud credits, managing and organizing like the Slack, the GitHub, uh, running the Kubernetes Community Day program. So, you know, helping make the community around our open source projects become successful too. Uh, and I also want to point one thing, like uh, some folks uh, might think that Kubernetes is so big and uh, oh, it's a little bit like overwhelming, intimidating. Um, there are like many, many CNCF projects uh, with the same kind of experience. You would get the same kind of experience, but they are not as big. So they are like tightly knit community. Uh, some of them are sandbox. Some of them are like 20 contributors or like 30 contributors. So um, if you feel like a lot of um, uh, like communities has like over 10,000 to till date, I don't know, like more than that, if that feels like a whole lot and it's a, such a big project and you want to sm start small, there are like many, many CNCF uh, sandbox projects or incubating projects. They are like focused on one thing. They are small and you uh, it's scoped very uh, like to one thing. Um, so it might be like uh, also a nice place to start. So just don't feel like you have to only start with Kubernetes and that is the only thing to contribute, the only way to contribute to open source. That's not true. So there are like many projects within the CNCF umbrella um, that you can pick and choose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said before, there's 113 different projects. So if you don't uh, want to get involved in Kubernetes, you have a lot of other choices too. Um, so, uh, the sessions will be posted on YouTube. There'll be, uh, it'll be sent out on Twitter and also in the CNCF Slack, um, when it's live. So just watch the CNCF Slack and that's probably the easiest one. We have some questions about imposter syndrome. Uh, don't worry. I don't have any coding background and I work at the CNCF. So I get imposter syndrome all the time of what am I doing here? Uh, you know? We all just try to contribute and do our own part. Uh, if you are contributing to the community, you're, you're doing it right. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, Kubernetes is so big. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, people are asking for links to the CNCF uh, projects. So let me just pull that up really quick. Uh, because we don't allow sharing of links. So this is all the uh, graduated and incubating uh, projects. Cool. Um, info for non-traditional students. I'd actually recommend like a lot of the same resources. I don't think there's anything tied specifically to one particular university or curriculum, um, just because university system is quite separate. Uh, students, I guess, we say students is more like people that are new to the ecosystem. Like I'd even recommend a lot of the same resources to people that are just starting out um, that are maybe like even mid career too. Um, everybody has to start at the beginning, you know? So cool. Um, some other tracks that students should look at um, that I can recommend is, so if we go back to our schedule here uh, is the one-on-one track. Uh, everybody, or if you're a student, you're probably, um uh new to the ecosystems the one-on-one -on -one track is uh, a great place to start things like how not to start with kubernetes um i'm really interested in noah abrams the safari of kubernetes and its natural habitat i know he uh is i think he's a dev advocate at stormboard and gives really great talks um lots of other things going on here uh the case release shadow program uh, beyond Kubernetes security. I know Ellen and Tabitha gave a 
awesome talk at the last KubeCon, so this is definitely one you don't want to miss. Um, yeah, if if you're a non-traditional student or learning about Minikube or maybe need a Kubernetes bootcamp, maybe this is the talk for you. Um, uh, homebrewing a Kubernetes bootcamp sounds super interesting uh, to you as a way to get, you know, maybe your first job. So I think that would be uh, a great one to check out. And then also another one, if uh, we're marketers, if we can learn distributed systems in Kubernetes, so can you. Uh, <laughs> probably an interesting one about uh, people that are doing non-code contributions um, too. Yeah. Beyond that, another one that would be good to check out is also the business value track. Um, this is talking about the value of, C of cloud native and Kubernetes in like actually dollars and cents for a business's bottom line. So things like quantifying the business value of cloud native data management or uh, water is a driving force in innovation, open source in the Dutch government. You know, so I think a lot of really great talks here about being able to translate from the technical to uh, the business side too. Uh, um, th there are like a couple of questions, buddy. Really. Um, I didn't mean to um, stop you. So one is like, is there a um, talk or a panel related to Kubernetes release shadow program? I think there is one. Um, it's by Divya. Divya uh, she has been a part of uh, the release team for a few cycles, and I had the pleasure to work with her. She's just awesome. Um, and I know that clashes with the session that I am presenting, but uh, I think it's both of them are going to be great. So that one's there, and there is one other question, like how can I become a member of CNCF? Um, yeah, so when, sorry, if this wasn't clear, um, when we talk about like membership, it's actually like companies that join as member and they pay dues. If you wanna become a contributor to CNCF projects, it's free. Um, the only thing you have to do is, you know, submit your first pull request. Um, so really there, there's no kind of like formal barriers. I guess Kubernetes might have a, a CLA, uh, but if you check out the contributing site, it'll kind of like walk you through how, how to do that too. Yeah. Um, let's see, other interesting tracks for students or uh, new people to the ecosystem. Another good one is if you want to, one thing that we're really big here is on community. So checking out the community track. Um, so things about like taking the skills you learn from working in open source into practical experience, um, talking about burnout. I, I know there is mentions of imposter syndrome. So burnout, I, I think that imposter syndrome sometimes go hand in hand. So this would be a good one to check out. Measuring project health, um, talking about your project's contributor experience. Man, there's like so many talks here. I like, I, I marked these on my schedule, but I forgot. I'm I, like so excited about all these, um, yeah, exciting things. How to build a successful open source community or company. Okay, I'm like adding more to my session, like as we're speaking, just cause there's, uh, <laughs> this is so many great talks here. <laughs> this is this is bad. The number of talks I need to see is, is growing and growing. Um, no question. Uh, out of curiosity, what are some of the main roles of CNCF ambassadors? Yes, yeah, so these are pe the people in the ecosystem that go out and promote um, all the projects, and they do that in a variety of different ways. Some host like meetups or cloud native community groups around the world. Some people run different live streams. Uh, it's just kind of like well known people in the ecosystem that are doing things to you know grow and sustain the community around our projects. Uh, a couple are also running Kubernetes community days. Uh, shout out to uh, Sergio, which has KCD Guatemala coming up um, in December. We have Feynman who's organizing a KCD in China, uh, actually this Saturday, right after KubeCon. So if you need more content, uh, go and sign up for that one. So uh, the ambassadors are really, you know, people that are helping out all around the ecosystem. Yeah. I see schedules, uh, Sketch syncs to the events. If I start a session in the event site, uh, will it update Sketch? I don't think so. I think it's like from Sketch to the event. Yeah. I have tried the other way around, but I have never tried uh, this way. Like add to your event and go check in the schedule. I have never done that. Yeah, I think this is probably the easier um, way. Just add it to Sketch and then it'll add it. Um, and then the last track uh, that I'd be very remiss if I, I didn't mention 
is obviously you should go to the keynote sessions. <laughs> um, these are you know, kind of like the the big talks, um, like the welcoming opening remarks from Priyanka, uh, talking about a different kind of cloud native. You know, these are the like talks that are going to give you kind of like the, the overview of what's going on in the whole ecosystem. I know there's yeah. I would say just attend the keynotes. They're all going to be great. Uh, a lot of great people there. Uh, any events geared towards Kubernetes certs? Um, not specifically at KubeCon. I know some of the Kubernetes training partners are looking to put together something for next year. But if you're looking for something in the meantime, there is a show on Cloud Native TV called Certs Magic with Siam, where he walks through some of the different Kubernetes certification questions. Uh, also talking about certs, you're definitely going to want to check out Priyanka's keynote. Uh, first thing on the first day, she has an exciting announcement for students around certification too. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, a couple things for like, and then I guess kind of like to round it out, like what to do after um, like KubeCon. Uh, so one is like, if you're looking for a job, check out the uh, job site. Uh, another one is we just put together and released a repo uh, from uh, for students on GitHub, and this is a lot of you know kind of like different ways of what to do after KubeCon. So actually, let me just kind of share that one right now. We can kind of walk you through that so you can understand. You know, if you get excited from this event, kind of what to do afterwards. I think I think that's really nice um, of you uh, that you uh, put this together because um, after the event, um, it feels like I'm at the same place where I started. I do have a lot of information, but I still still feel like what I'm gonna do with all the information. So this is like amazing. Thanks, Willie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Uh, number two here is uh, attend KubeCon, Cloud NativeCon. Well, you're already in the right place. So, you know, you're already having a good success uh, bright and early in the morning here on the West Coast so, or whatever time zone you're in. Um, there is a lot of free training courses that uh, Linux Foundation offers on the edX platform. I'll also go down to this in a minute. Uh, the big announcement is there will be a new certification uh, coming out, creating like a local community in your area or signing up to them, meeting some of the ambassadors apply for the mentorship programs that we were talking about earlier, um, diving deeper into technical concepts and prepare for uh, certification exams, get certified and finding a job. So if you're looking for more things like check out kind of all the links that are um, posted in here, um, it'd be great to have you kind of utilize this resource. Also, this is an open source repo. So if you think there's other resources that people should know about that should be added here, please feel free to uh, add them into, uh, just like checking through the chat. Uh, uh, there, uh, the keynotes don't seem to be mentioned online virtual. Yeah, the, 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 they won't be streaming here on Cloud Native TV. They'll be streaming in the Meeting Play platform. Um, the, the streaming is like in, you should have gotten an email about it, but it's just, I'll, I guess I'll drop a link to the platform to in the chat for people that need help finding it. Um, so even though I've signed a CLA and contributed to Kubernetes, but I can't attend the CNCF End User Partner Summit uh, because I can't RSVP. So the End User Partner Summit is for uh, people that are employed at end user companies. So these are companies like Spotify, like Intuit, like Lyft, like Capital One that are, are using cloud native technologies. Um, but don't actually sell products or services around them. Uh, if you're a student, if you're not employed, um, then you don't work for a company, so you don't work for an end user company. Uh, join one of these companies, uh, get hired by them. I know there are probably a bunch of them are hiring, and then you can join the end user uh, summit at the next KubeCon. Cool. Um, what other things do we have left? Uh, we already dropped like the different resources. I know um, we've kind of like gone through everything uh, that I've had so far, I guess, do you have any more recommendations, advice? Do people have questions? Like what else do people want to chat about? 
uh, I think that is a comprehensive list of things that we went through. Um, and I hope uh, the uh, we provided just enough information through the session. Um, I do want to mention one other unofficial. I, I think it's unofficial because uh, there was a cube um, in the Kubernetes Slack. There was a um, um, there was a channel for careers and where people were looking, uh, posting all the jobs uh, that the companies are hiring. I know they were actually archiving the channel in favor of jobs.cncf.io that uh, Billy had shared before. But then there was like enough push to bring the channel back. So watch, I would say watch both the places because even the Kubernetes uh, careers channel gets a lot of tra a lot of posts uh, for a job um, entry level internship or like any any level of job and you can also actually go and say hi uh, and post your resume and ask for um, jobs offer um, jobs or like you can ask for offers or stuff like that so I've seen both uh, I seen the channel very interactive because it goes both ways um, so that's one other thank you thank you Billy. I was gonna I was going to like, okay, after I finished talking, I'm going to go and look like. I got it for you. No worries. Yeah. So that's one thing that I wanted to add. And uh, another than that, uh, we have covered pretty much all the things. And um, uh, the contributor uh, KDF site, uh, I just want to highlight it again. Uh, that's a very, very great place to start if you want to start contributing because there were like one or two questions that I saw, like, how do I get started? So go to that KDF site and then you will, KDF's dev, dev site and you will find a lot of information there, be it code related or non-code related, right? You don't have to always jump jump and then do code related stuff to be a contributor. You can start doing other stuff like uh, help run a meeting. That's a great thing. We are always in need of some volunteer who can take notes and that is the best way that you would learn by taking notes in a meeting um it's one of the best um uh, opportunities and these are not highlighted other uh, now other places but uh, once you start join the meetings and start uh participating in them this is how we would learn um what what is happening in that sig or what is happening in that area and how can i uh, contribute or um, it gives you both like soft skills uh, uh, experience and as well as like technical experience because you will be diving deeper um, into that area so that's one thing that i wanted to say yeah Awesome. Um, so there's a couple more questions. Any idea if the sketch event page will be accessible indefinitely? Yes, it's like uh, open for like a very long time. Uh, if you need to like refer back to it and see what was there. Uh, where are the recordings posted? So this one will be uh, on Twitch for the next like two weeks. Then it'll be on YouTube. Uh, all the sessions after they're done, we'll be live in the meeting play platform, so you can watch them at any point. And then a couple of weeks after the show, all the sessions will also be posted to YouTube. So a variety of different ways to watch them, uh, depending on where you want to do it. But uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, it'll all be on YouTube. Uh, I have a question. Due to the pandemic scenario, I only have virtual experience of KubeCon. Could you please share some insights on how college students can attend KubeCon in person, providing the pandemic situation is in control? That's actually uh, a great question. Um, so CNCF offers a lot of scholarships, so both diversity and need-based scholarships for people to come and attend KubeCon um, uh, when they can. I know it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year to help you get uh, new people uh, to the community here to the conference. Uh, I know a lot of great people uh, have actually started their careers on like diversity uh, scholarships. So like one is like Nikita um, and she's now on the Kubernetes steering community. Um, so uh, a great way to find that is to go to the scholarship sections on the KubeCon website and you can find more information there. Uh, can you tell us about the diversity scholarships? Um, yeah, um, so it's a, like full scholarship to attend both like your flights and like airfare. Um, I can drop a link to like the one for the current one. Like obviously it's closed for right now. Um, sorry, um, but you can find out more information there. Uh, another question. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, also feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions. You can find um, my uh, Twitter handle uh, there in the chat or just email me. Um, also, how to obtain a Kubernetes 
certification discount. So uh, you do get 50% off by attending KubeCon. Uh, so that's a great way to get a discount already. So you're already getting a discount. Um, yeah, I guess, are there more questions that people have in the chat? Any like final thoughts? I know we need to wrap it up here in about uh, like three minutes. So yeah. Last questions, three, two, one. Okay, well, uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Oh, oh fun question. <laughs> How can you instantly, within seconds, provide the links in this chat? Uh, do it in the background. Uh, after spending you know, two years of, uh, on Zoom meetings, I'm, I'm very good at doing, doing things in the background when I need to. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, that's, my, that's my hack, yeah. Um, Cool. Uh, any closing remarks? Uh, thanks for having me in this uh, session. Uh, it was great interacting um, with you and answering uh, all the great questions. Please feel free to reach out to me if you need um, like um, any help and uh, if you want to get started started with the contributions or like just to talk about um, um, anything related to open source, I would be always uh, happy to help. And also like uh, if you are not getting a response uh, immediately, that's because that I'm here at KubeCon, so my yeah. responses might be delayed a little bit, <laughs> but I will definitely get back. Uh, it was all nice meeting you all and uh, please take care, uh, stay safe. Yep, and, uh, thanks everyone for joining today. See you at the rest of the conference, bye. Sounds good. Bye.